Hi, Leo, Sun, and Rising. Welcome to your January 2023 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So a new year brings, um, I would say, new beginnings, but not necessarily when we expect them. Of course, new moons, we kind of expect new beginnings, and that will be the time frame that I do see things really starting for the year, but I'm talking about January 1st. This is one of those years, and we had one, I, I don't think last year, but I think it was like a couple of years ago, where we had a Mercury retrograde going into the new year. And that always kind of irks me, but, you know, because I like that clean s slate vibe, you know. But yeah, we do have that, plus we have a Mars retrograde. So um, this is carrying over into the new year. And on the 6th of the month, the full moon is at 16 degrees of Cancer. And this is your 12th house. So you, you have this, um, it's, it's actually kind of interesting because that is the last house. So that is a sense of closure of some sort um, for the past cycle um, of this, we could call it the year itself. Um, and I mean, your, your particular cycle, but you could even say for the last year. So something may be finished with in an overall sense. This is the house of dream, the dream state. So it's a very psychic, uh, time. Pay attention to your dreams. You may get some psychic hits from that. It's a time where some may let go of self-defeating patterns, bad habits, addictions. And of course, January is a time when a lot of people tend to do that. But for you, you really have that kind of uh, special mojo for that kind of uh, task. You know, you have the stars backing you on that one. And um, tying up any loose ends. This can even be for people who, for, for those Leos who have been really digging deep into their psyche. You know, you have Neptune transiting your eighth house. You have for the last 10 years. So some Leos have naturally migrated or gravitated towards, um, these esoteric studies and practices. And that has helped you to, um, not only raise your vibration, but do a lot of shadow work and healing. And this can, you know, maybe close some karmic contracts for you. Um, this is, I would say, especially for people who are conscious of these things in particular, for people that are, you know, not very conscious, maybe a lunar eclipse would do the trick, I suppose. But anyway, um, on the 12th, Mars turns direct at eight degrees of Gemini. So for you, Gemini is the 11th house of friends, the groups that you belong to. It's also your dreams. And I'm talking about like your hopes, wishes, the long range goals that you have, not necessarily connected to your um, career. So this can be uh, a relief. I mean, this is going to be a relief for everybody because we've had Mars so long not only retrograding for, um, you know, over two months, but also in the sign of Gemini for so long that we can start to see that forward movement. And by the end of March, um, Mars is going to leave this, uh, sign and house altogether. And 
then it'll be in your 12th house and that'll be an interesting transit as well. But the point I'm making is that, you know, this is a personal planet. So for it to stay in one area so long, I think is probably uh, difficult sometimes for people because they really want that sense of movement, forward movement. So, you know, it's possible that some of you have felt at odds with the people in your social network and, and the groups that you belong to. Sometimes, you know, we join organizations and this could be like groups. It could even be like a spiritual group. It can be any type of group. And we think that we're on the same page and we find out that they're not. And, you know, I know as a Sagittarian, as a fellow fire sign, that we're always looking to, you know, we might just come out and voice our concerns. And sometimes people don't appreciate that. They want to call the shots or what have you. So you may be clashing with, you may have been clashing with certain people, but you had to kind of uh, just kind of hold it together and not get like upset. A lot of us have had to kind of rein in our anger during the Mars retrograde, but it's a great learning experience too about neutrality. I was just thinking about this right before I was recording this, you know, and I've been hearing that word a lot in the new age community. And it's a really good one because the reason that we get angry is that we decide that something is really, uh, bad. And yeah, I mean, there are some things that are bad, but if you maintain a neutral attitude, then you maintain your equilibrium. And that is protecting your energy ultimately, because you're not like draining it with anger. Um, so anyway, um, this can be a situation where you are going ahead with your, um, goals that you had had before. Maybe you were just kind of gung ho about something. And then all of a sudden you were stopped dead in your tracks and now you can go forward with them. On the 18th, Mercury turns direct at eight degrees of Capricorn. And this is going to be in your sixth house of work. So there may have been some negotiations that you had with your employer. And, uh, during this time that, that could be something that you have, um, resolved and it might have some connection to that Mars retrograde as well, because you may have had to decide what is truly important to you that connects to your goals and what you can leave behind. And maybe you weren't really sure what was important and what wasn't. Sometimes we're just looking at it in terms of like the money um, or the additional prestige, like of a, a more loftier job title. And when Mercury goes retrograde, you might also be thinking about, do I really like what I'm doing? Do I really think that um, this is the direction I need to continue to go down? And that kind of thing can uh, resolve itself eventually when, when Mercury goes direct. Two days later, the sun goes into Aquarius. So you see what's going on here. We have Mars turning direct on the 12th, Mercury turning direct on the 18th, the sun going into a new sign on the 20th. And then the very next day, we're having a new moon at one degree of Aquarius. And even the next day after that, Uranus, which is the ruler of Aquarius, goes direct at 14 degrees of Taurus. And by the way, Leo, that's your 10th house of career. So you may have been experiencing some crazy, um, uh, 
you know, unpredictable things, you know, Uranus retrograde is like a loose cannon, uh, with your career, um, situation and Uranus going direct can be kind of this more of a stabilizing effect now. Um, Uranus in the 10th house can lead to some real twists and turns for sure when it's transiting the 10th, but it could be a very liberating experience where you get more freedom. Maybe you're even uh, a digital nomad. Who knows? Because Uranus can be a uh, technology. So like I said, I do think this is a tale of two months. I mean, of two, uh, January's the first half you could say, um, is more like the, the way December was and all of that kind of stuff. And then we have a lot of forward movement happening towards the end of the month. Um, the sun going into Aquarius means the sun is going into your seventh house of committed partnership. And that's where the new moon is. But because it's only at one degree, it's very possible that it's going to impact more of your um, sixth house of work. So that might be uh, a new job, a new position. So there you have it, Leo. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, the link is below. Take care.